Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, students get a first-hand view of the dangers of texting and driving. Student government partners with a rental agency to help organizations. And in sports, Bison make history in football. SU TV News with Brandon Clark, Gretchen Cluck, and Sports with Matthew Kurtz. Well, the search is on. NDSU's Dean of College Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, Dr. Thomas Riley, will step down from his position in July 2011. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. On top of this, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs Craig Schnell has also announced his resignation for the summer of 2011. Dean Riley has served the university since 1996 and Provost Schnell has been around for two and a half decades. This is not a normal situation for academic institutions. Uh, picking two uh, leaders at the same time is awkward because, for example, they're picking a dean who's going to have to work with a provost who doesn't know who it is even going to be and yet the relationship between the provost and the dean is kind of an important matter. The search committee has been appointed to choose the replacement for Dean Riley, and another one will be formed soon to fill Provost Snell's position. An average text takes about three seconds to make. Going 68 miles per hour, you'd travel the distance of a football field without your eyes on the road. If facts like this don't deter you from texting and driving, a student campaign at North Dakota State University is hoping it can. 91.4% of students at NDSU say they text and drive, even though 82% of them said that it is um, dangerous to text and drive. So we're trying to change that 91% to be at least lower than it is right now. The public relations campaign class has a heavy message to send out to fellow students this week. Have we ever had a citizen of Fargo die in a car crash caused by a cell phone? And yes, we have. Have buys and pry, don't text and drive, is the slogan. And the students in Dr. O'Connor's class know how important that message can be. States do have bans on texting and driving, but North Dakota is not one of them. And we also have the youngest age that you can start driving. Wednesday's presentation included representatives from AAA and the Fargo and Moorhead Police Departments, who know all too well the effects of texting and driving. But if you get uh, cited for care required or reckless driving, uh, that's a, basically a death sentence for your insurance. After several minutes of chaos, as I approached the victim, I recognized her as a friend of mine. Throughout the campaign, students are asked to take a pledge not to text and drive, and these students are hoping it will make a difference. We hope, yeah, it will, it will help them to at least think about it before they do it. The goal was to get 3,000 students to take the pledge not to text and drive. So far, the class has gotten 1,300 students to pledge, so they're well on their way. NDSU students cannot carry concealed weapons on campus, but that may be changing soon. Student government recently hosted a town hall meeting in the Memorial Union to gather input on the hotly debated issue. Concealed carry is something North Dakota state law allows qualified citizens to do, but in public, but not on university grounds. The open forum was followed by testimony from Vice President for University Relations, Keith Bierke, Head of University Police, Ray Boyer, and Michael Hoym for Students for Conceal and Carry. Basically what we're gonna do with the information we got today is just continue discussion. We are staying neutral at this point. We're not going to make up a decision, but the goal of the student government is to make a decision, um, before the legislative session begins and before we pick up this issue. The student senate was satisfied with the debate but is calling it a first step. They anticipate further discussion and welcome more feedback so they can take a stand on the issue before the next state legislature. Student organizations no longer have to worry about finding transportation to their events. A changed century code this past fall prevented them from using the state fleet vehicles other than being with a professor for research. The response from members was overwhelmingly negative. Because student organizations can no longer use the state fleet, student government decided to set up a deal with Enterprise Rental Company where student organizations pay by day or by week and receive unlimited miles. 
a lower age to be able to rent the vehicles, is another reason Enterprise was chosen. They allow um, drivers up to, uh, uh, down to the age of 18, uh, which is great. A lot of other companies, um, you have to be at least 21, um, but a majority are at least 24, and if you are under the age of 24, you have to pay a large fee. And student organizations have been taking advantage of these new options. Before we had our agreement with, um, with Enterprise, while we were testing it out with our trial run, uh, we had about six or seven club sports. Um, and then now it's well into the hundreds. But how can this help NDSU from a university level? I think that'll be a great reference for our legislators um, and also for um, the university system to better understand how many organizations are actually using the vehicles and how much demand there is. Enterprise will also benefit from the deal. In a way, it benefits us because, like I mentioned before, we want to be involved in our community. We want to be not maybe a big corporate uh, office, but something that's local, uh, where students and staff know us. Both sides hope this collaboration will continue and will always meet the needs of the students. Student government is continuing talks with the North Dakota Student Association and state legislatures to change the policy. With this, organizations have access to the state fleet and will be covered under liability. Well, it's nice to see that student government decided to help out the student organizations. I know there was such an uproar that they wanted to actually sit down and write pieces of legislation right. to turn in. Wow, students really taking initiative there. You can tell they're passionate about their rights. And, and what a better company to choose than Enterprise because of the lower age. Right, definitely. All right. Well, coming up on SUTV News, one local bus driver shares his journey with Matt Bus. We'll have this and more when we return. students I know Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. SUTV News is sponsored in part by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back. For the occasional NDSU bus rider, it's simply known as Route 31. But for those faculty and students who actually use the route, they are sure to know Mike. SUTV's Dave Vane introduces us to a man who knows this camper be campus better than most. For the last eight and a half years, Mike Chuakin has driven a loop that goes from Menard Hall past the Fargo Dome and high rises and back to Menard Hall. Taping in, it's going to be on the NDSU network. In that time, Mike has been able to meet thousands of students, knowing many of them by name. 
He makes sure all of his riders feel as welcome as possible, understanding many come from small towns having no experience with the city bus system. I have met so many students. I know them by their first name. They know, they call me Mike. Uh, the first year I was out here, they tried to call me Mr. Schwack, and I said, no, no. I said, my name is Mike. I said, call me Mike. So they have ever since. What students appreciate most from the ride across campus is Mike's colorful personality. Mike cares about all the students that are on the bus. It's really awesome. He'll take an interest in what you're studying. He'll talk to you. On Friday mornings, he has trivia. And whoever gets the answer gets an apple, which is really cool. Where do you want to break your bus? I've watched in these nine years 12 buildings go up. Uh, and I've watched the population of students grow from 8,000 to 14,000 here in the last nine years. So it, it's been quite an experience for me uh, just to work here. Mike says he has plenty of stories about students he's become acquainted with over the years. His favorite is of one couple who met on his bus seven years ago and are now married with children. I'm Dave Vane. SUTV News. Mike feels the worst part of his job is the winter weather, which is why he is especially appreciative of the campus road crews. The Christmas spirit is making itself known on campus. The NDSU bookstore hosted its first annual wreath decorating contest. Organizers purchased the wreaths and provided students, faculty, and staff the opportunity to share their creativity. The pr process now is bidding on the wreaths until Friday, December 3rd. There are a total of 36 to purchase. Country members of the military are often away from their families during the holiday season. To honor their sacrifice, the NDSU Army ROTC program will be erecting a hero tree this holiday season. Pictures of the servicemen and women will be used to adorn the hero tree, acting as a tribute and remembrance. The tree was put on display <clears throat> in room 103 of the Benson Bunker Field House on November 23rd. It will remain standing until January 14th. Well, that's definitely a neat idea. The holidays must be a hard time for those families with people that are deployed, and what a great memorial. Yeah, and this is kind of an interesting thing. Normally, Christmas trees are for decorating with ornaments and family, mm -hmm. and it's, it serves a different por purpose, that's, and it, that's not typically seen. So right, very special. Interesting. Mm -hmm. An NDSU student flees his home country seeking a better life. We'll have this story and more when we return. Today we'll talk about how the new NDSU Live student email system will help you stay connected and manage your everyday life. The new features of the NDSU Live will not only save you time, but can also save you from the headache of misplaced email messages, forgotten appointments, and lost files. So let's talk tech. NDSU Live includes email, calendaring, web-based versions of Microsoft Office, and SkyDrive storage space. It also has a built-in search function, providing you with an easy-to-use tool for finding specific email messages. Sorting through hundreds of email messages in your inbox and folders can be time-consuming, but with the search option, finding email messages, attachments, and contacts is simple. Between school, work, and social activities, it can be difficult to keep track of our hectic daily schedules. NDSU Live includes a built-in calendar system that you can use to manage your schedule with ease. The NDSU Live Scheduling Assistant can help you find the best time to meet with peers, to work on class projects, study for upcoming exams, or to meet up with friends. You can also set reminders for important meetings that you don't want to miss, such as meetings with your instructors or advisor. NDSU Live also includes a SkyDrive with 25 gigabytes of storage capacity. Now you can store your files online instead of carrying a flash drive or flooding your email inbox. SkyDrive also gives you access to online versions of Microsoft Office, including Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. In other words, you don't have to purchase this software to complete your work, and you can conveniently save and store the files on your SkyDrive when you're done. To activate your NDSU Live account, visit the ITS slash NDSU Live website.
Welcome back to SUTV News. A new agreement has been made between NDSU and a school in Pakistan. Arshad Malik, registrar at Comstat's Institute of Information Technology in Pakistan, recently visited ND <coughs> NDSU to sign an agreement sending CI CIIT faculty to work on doctoral degrees at NDSU. The partnership will focus on electrical and computer engineering with possible expansion of computer science and physics. Well, one NDSU student is now a sophomore after spending 17 years in a refugee camp. Meg Adhikari was four years old when his family fled to Nepal from Bhutan, a country in the Himalayan mountains northeast of India. SUTV's Dave Vane has his story. Over 100,000 Bhutanese became refugees after their dictator established a one-nation, one-people policy in 1990. This meant the entire population had to either convert to the king's religion and lifestyle, leave the country, or be imprisoned. Life was the worst life that I ever experienced. And when I got the opportunity of UNHCR through the immigrant department from United States of America, I thought that that could be the, my best option to go to America and start a normal life. In 2008, many of the Bhutanese refugees, including Meg's family, were placed in the United States with the aid of the International Organization for Migration. They feel blessed to be located in Fargo due to its education opportunities. Meg is now in his second year at NDSU, and his brother Kashi, who already has a master's in political science, is also planning to further his education as a bison. Taking international studies, that particular subject has been my passion. That's why I always wanted to work with agencies because there are a lot of agencies working for the welfare of the refugees in Nepal. That's why, that's why I am motivated towards uh, doing my master's degree in international studies. I'm Dave Vane, SUTV News. Upon graduation, Meg says he'll travel abroad helping refugees in various parts of the world with his NDSU education. A local organization will benefit from a rivalry between the athletic departments at Concordia, MSU Moorhead, and NDSU. Thunder, Scorch, and Colonel will be ringing bells for the Salvation Army this Saturday in the Tri-College Mascot Challenge from 12.30 to 5.30 at Shields, Shields All Sports. Last year, Thunder raised the most money. Overall, the trio, trio gener generated $2,800. Well, some some good, clean fun between the universities raising money. I think that's a pretty good cause. Yeah. <laughs> and Matthew, though, in sports, Bison football, four turnovers against Robert Morris, they're, they're looking good. You know, the last time the Bison had a f uh, home playoff game, I was two years old. Got to go back to 1992. <laughs> that was back in the days of Dakota Field. Wow. Chili, Chili playoff came back then. But when we come back, we'll have highlights from the NDSU Bison's game with Robert Morris. And in the temperature-controlled Fargo Dome, that and more, SUTV Sports is coming back. Imagine the impact when an institution of education becomes an instrument of growth, where not just one, but thousands of ideas make a difference, where dreams are challenged tested and made real when people come together and make life better. Can you imagine? Cutters. Uh-oh. What are we going to do now? Give me the phone. Hello, Jimmy Johns. Thank God you made it. I was so hungry, I thought I was gonna die. Jimmy Johns, America's favorite sandwich delivery guys. Nice work, Johnson.
Catch what's new on the NDSU campus. See what the students are up to. Check on the latest from Bison Athletics. Catch it here only on Cable One. SU TV News. SU TV Sports is sponsored in part by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields, the world's largest selection of sports sportswear, and footwear. Welcome back. Well, not only did the Bison football team make history by making the FCF playoffs for the first time, but they were looking to add to the history making with a first round win. Standing in their way were the Robert Morris Colonials of the Northeast Conference. Now the Bison happy to be in town for the first home playoff game at the Fargo Dome. Pick it up on the first drive of the game here, Miles Russ gets it in from five yards out to give the Colonials an early 7-0 lead. We'll jump ahead to the third quarter here, NDSU's down 7-6, seven, six, seven six, and this is the Bison offense's first touchdown in six quarters of football. NDSU has a 13-7 lead. They were just getting started though. Here Jensen dumps it off to DJ McNorton, he'll scramble. For 49 yards after the catch, he does the dirty work to give the Bison a 20-7 lead. But the Colonials would storm back to within three. But here, folks, Jensen with the momentum changer of the game. He sneaks it in for the touchdown, gives NDSU with this a 10-point lead. The Bison would continue to just pour it on. They whopped the Colonials with 43 points. That puts a fork in Robert Morris's season. The Bison are moving on. 43-17 to 17 is your final. The Bison improved to 8 and 4 overall with the win. DJ McNorton led the way with 27 carries for 110 yards and a touchdown. He also caught two passes for 110 yards and a touchdown. The Bison will now travel to Bozeman, Montana for their second round matchup with the Montana State Bobcats on Saturday. Now with a thrilling five-set victory in the Summit League Championship game, the women's volleyball team is in the NCAA tournament for the second time in the last 3 seasons. Throughout an emotional, roller coaster like season, the solid play of sophomore outside hitter Bryn Jokey has helped return the Bison to volleyball's big dance. It's no secret that the NDSU volleyball team is emotional. After a tough loss in the 2009 Summit League Championship game, the sudden resignation of their head coach this fall, and the snapping of their 42-game home winning streak, emotions this season have been higher than ever. But then there's Bryn Joker, a different type of leader. She definitely was a very quiet um, player on the court, but I let her actions do a lot of her speaking. And you could tell she was definitely emotional, but she didn't let it all come out unless she was completely comfortable. That comfort level Minnesota, wasn't the highest last year when um, Jokey was thrown into the starting lineup as a true freshman. It was something that she'd have one great match and you know be there, and then the, she'd let the pressure get to her a little bit, and so then she'd have to kind of take a step back. But a year later, Jokey is now a team leader, not only statistically, but emotionally. She's definitely like been an emotional leader. When she's, when she's in a good mood and things start clicking right for her, everyone seems to be that way. The 6-1 Jokey leads the team in service aces and total points, and sits second in kills and digs. But this season's adversity has let Jokey step up off the court as well. I kind of kept with the more positive attitude and that we can't change anything and we can't go back to the past and all we got to do is move forward and that's what I'm trying to do with the positive energy and kind of get our team going. Like if there's a rut, I try to like step it up and be the one that gets the energy going. Another way that Jokey gets her team going, her sick jump serve. If I get on a run, that kind of gets the energy going and everybody kind of feeds off of that. And after their dramatic Summit League title win, Jokey and the Bison will ride the energy all the way to the NCAA Tournament. Matthew Kurtz, SU TV Sports. The Bison are currently on a four-game winning streak and now head to Minneapolis to take on the 10th-seeded Golden Gophers Friday night at 7 p.m. Well, after two road, losing two road games to Minnesota and Green Bay, head coach Saul Phillips said the men's basketball team was a little bit edgy heading into Monday's matchup with Valley City State. The Bison look to take out their frustration on the Vikings and get things back on track. We head to the Bison Sports Arena for the in-state non-conference rivalry. We have the footage here. Um, the 
the bison would roll early in this one. There we go to the, to the north edge of campus to the Bison Sports Arena. Mom and her son enjoying their gum during the game. Here, Drew Lumberg pulls out for the three-pointer. This was three of his three, or one of his three three-pointers in the game. Later in the half, Drew Lumberg hits the bounce pass to Eric Carlson. He'll turn around for the jump hook. That's pretty looking. Give NDSU a 34 to 15 lead. Late in the game, Nate Zastrow dumps it off to Trayvon Wright for the emphatic dunk right there. And yes, you would roll in this one for a 33-point win. 88 to 55 was your final score. With the win, the Bison improved to 4-3 and three overall. Drew Lumberg led the way with a career-high 16 points and 6-for-8 shooting. They will begin conference play Saturday, taking on the Jackrabbits in Brookings, South Dakota. So, Lots of success for the Bison um, athletic program right now. Since they moved to Division One, they've really had a lot of success. One, one other quick note is that the Bison were on ESPN's Scott Van Pelt show. They had the football helmet on his desk. Oh, so I did say that. Very impressive. That was a pretty cool. Very cool. <laughs> well, still to come on SUTV News, the constant snowfall at Newman Outdoor Field helps prepare for a national event. Catch what's new on the NDSU campus. See what the students are up to. Check on the latest from Bison Athletics. Catch it here only on Cable One. SU TV News. Mountains of snow are being formed at Newman Outdoor Field here in Fargo. Typically known for the Red Hawks baseball, it will play host to the Dakota Magic Casino Fargo National. The race will take place on Friday and Saturday, December 10th and 11th. This is the second of eight national events in the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series, the pro and semi-pro racing freestyle shows, and other finals from qualifying races will all be featured. Well, hopefully a week and a half away they can make enough snow. <laughs> Looks like it's really pumping it out there. Yeah, definitely. I think we should uh, break in there and get a game of King of the Hill going. How about that? <laughs> yeah, or, or even bring out the sleds and tubes. Those look like some pretty big hills. And I'd go get for, in trouble for that. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> we'll, we'll be sneaky. <laughs> Sounds right. great. Well, thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you again next week on SUTV News. For more information, pick up a copy of the NDSU Spectrum. <laughs>